Hello, my name is Jason Sutton. I represent the 320th, which are the colour troops went ashore on D-Day for the Americans. We were either medics or barrage balloon. As you can tell from my small collection, we have medical supplies, which would have been used for wound dressings in combat. It would have been masses of use for this. Over 500 colour troops were assigned as medics on D-Day for U Utah and Omaha Beach. As you go through, you're working. What is Barbara Assel? It sounds rude. Bar Barbara Assel is a beard softener to help you shave. So it's to soften up your, uh, your beard and your growth before you're using your razor blade. And I have to ask, if I didn't know, what is this item? Bear in mind that that is just here. I happen to have one in my hand, that's a prophylactic. Otherwise known, as a, otherwise known as a condom. Oh, in French. <laughs> yeah. French letter. The French letter. Can you hold it forward, please? These were actually these weren't actually used for what they were designed for. Hence the reason there's so many GI babies around. What we actually used them for was to go on the end of the rifle to stop your water going down it. Cool. Now we've got here a flamethrower. Flamethrower. I've not seen one before. Our flamethrower here. Would have been carried backpack carry one man operation would have fired a flame between 30 to 40 feet it was a mixture of heavy oil and diesel oil would stick to you diesel would burn you very heavy unit this, as an empty unit it's about 20 kilos full it's about 40. you also didn't want to be the man carrying it because if it got hit you would explode all over you We've got a bazooka here. M1A1 bazooka. <laughs> this is a Mark I? One. Right. So you, <laughs> certainly. So you have shoulder pads to be worn when you're not using it. <laughs> Heavy weapon, two-man operation. One to fire, one to load. Very basically made, very rudimental made, very crude. Why is it so crude? Cheap and cheerful. Simple to make, easy to operate. Didn't want anything to break in combat. You know, at the end of the day, this could be a lifesaver. You know, you've got armour coming towards you, this is what you need. Also used as an anti-personnel weapon. But like I say, very crude, very simple, very basic. And, uh, that's the Mark II bazooka, isn't it there? Yeah, Mark II rounds. These rounds could be used either in the bazooka as a rifle round, go on the ground with a launcher. Can't display launches, they're illegal. Uh, or it could also be used as a mine. You can run wires off this to a battery, place it in the ground, and as troops walk towards you, you can use it to detonate electronically as a mine. Now here's a very famous this one here is a grease gun. Because it looks just like a grease gun that someone might work on your automobile with. Certainly. Very crudely, very rudimentally made. Would you say it's their equivalent of a Sten gun? Basically the equivalent of a Sten gun. It was a replacement for the Thompson because it was cheaper to make. Oh, yes. Yes. So one of these would probably set you back in modern money, back then about 75 pence to make. Whereas a Thompson would probably set you back about two pounds seventy-five. It was effective weapon. An effective, yeah, effective combat weapon, close range. And just like the Thompson, because of the short barrel and the heavy caliber rounds, it was a point and squirt weapon. No point in trying to aim it. No point in using the stock. You literally held it, pointed, aimed down low. Because by the time you finish pulling the trigger, it's risen up. Thank you for your time. No problems at all. Thank you.